Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Washington, D.C. I'm Nick Miller for a Deck Tech Slash interview with Season 2 Points winner Chris Van Meter. How you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? Pretty good. Now, this weekend was a special one for you. Yes. You got to play two spicy decks. Uh, uh, a spicy and a half. I, right. would, I wouldn't call the standard deck spicy, but it's outside of my wheelhouse, right. I would say. Two uh, vari variety decks for you. Yes. And you played them for a special reason. Talk mm -hmm. about your Kickstarter, why you're playing these decks, and then we'll touch on the legacy deck that you played today. Yeah, well, uh, I started a Kickstarter about a month ago to produce the Beard Power shirts. Um, I would have worn it, but I wore it yesterday, and I'm not going to wear the same shirt twice. Good, Although some, good mag idea. some Magic players do, <laughs> I, I will not. Um, to, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, to produce the shirts. Um, I initially set my goal for like $2,000 so that I could, you know, just produce. My, my guesstimate was like, you know, 100, maybe 150 shirts um, as far as the feedback that I got on Twitter and Facebook when I put the feelers out there. And it raised over $7,500, um, which was a lot more than what Quite I expected. Quite a bit more. Uh, Partway through the Kickstarter, I decided that I also wanted to do a BBD CBM playmat, mm -hmm. which was going to be my next project. But because this one was going so well, I figured I would just roll them all into one. Um, so we hit that goal was at five thousand dollars, and then once the the playmat hit, everybody just started pledging so they could get the playmat and the shirts. And the playmat, of course, artwork going to be done by Kristen Plesko. Yes, by Kristen Plesko. Does she all has. the tokens, playmats for the uh, oh, open, yeah. the IQs, and all that for Star City. Yep, I was just really happy with the the, the art that she did for myself and BBD's token, mm -hmm. uh, the elemental and the germ. So I decided that I wanted to get, to see if she was willing to, you know do the art for our playmat and she agreed and it's going to be awesome. Any um, teaser on what that's going to look like? Uh, no. All right. <laughs> It'll have BBD myself and uh, some of the uh, creatures that we are iconically known for. Excellent. Um, so yeah, everything went perfect. One of the, on Kickstarter you set up uh, different levels for pledges to get different rewards. Mm -hmm. So obviously I was giving away the shirt and the playmat, uh, some other cool things like some altered tokens that I'm going to do myself and whatnot. But one of the big rewards um, was that anybody that pledged $200 or more, they got to pick my exact 75 for a standard open, legacy open, or a modern premier IQ if they decided they wanted me to play modern. And uh, there were three people that pledged to those. So this weekend I decided to play two of the decks, uh, one of which was standard, uh, Naya Hex Proof. Mm -hmm. And in Legacy is a like kind of a bug, Nick Fit, uh, Planeswalker, Super Friends kind of deck. Right, and that's the deck we're sitting down today. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen the Nick Fit shell before, something David McDarby likes to play a lot, did exceptionally yes. well at the last Invitational with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a value deck with uh, Veteran Explorer, Cabal Therapy, Gataxian Probe, yep. as well as Innocent Blood. Now, it's, it runs a suite of Planeswalkers, Jace, Liliana, Karn, but the two spicy ones that are in here today, you don't normally see in Legacy, Cure the Crashing Wave, Nissa World Waker. Yeah, uh, the person that had me play this deck, uh, his name is Mike uh, Loconti. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He's actually in the UK. And uh, he initially had a Garrick Apex Predator because he wanted to try out all the, the sweet standard Planeswalkers. Right. But I talked him into a Karn because I think Karn's just a little bit better. Uh, but Kiora and Nissa were surprisingly good. Um, I, I didn't fare so well in the tournament. I'm, I'm already dead. Uh, but no part to the two of those. Every time I cast Nissa, my opponents are always like, oh man, and then I killed them like three turns later right. because she puts on a very fast clock. Uh, Kioro is actually very good at locking down Tarmogoyf and Delver Secrets, mm -hmm. uh, and I could pitch it to Force of Will. Um, I made an emblem a couple times, uh, getting a concession from one and the other. Uh, I ended up losing, actually, is a funny story. I tweeted about it. Yes. Uh, the, the board states I have like four 9 9 Krakens. He has like four little random white creatures. He's on death and taxes, but he has a vial and I'm at one. So I just like have to stay at parity on creatures, otherwise I die. <laughs> um, so we're just like back and forth. He draws a creature, you know, every turn for four turns, and then he draws Sword of Fire and Ice and kills me because they are blue Krakens. They are blue Krakens. <laughs> but yeah, they were, they were both pretty sweet. Uh, I think that. Uh, Garrick Relentless is better than the two of them, mm -hmm. uh, but I know Mike wanted to try out some standard Planeswalkers in Legacy and see how they would fare, and I was pretty happy with it. Well, it's it. always interesting. Like Some people have tried out stuff like Ashiok in Legacy before, mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised at how effective some of these Planeswalkers are that don't really get played in Legacy. You land them early enough, a lot of these decks don't have the interaction to deal with them. Yeah, you know, I imagine the Nissa interaction where it's just pumping out dudes. Yeah, it's just a 4-4, four four, so can't it, does, deal with it, it. it doesn't die to bolt. She goes to poor loyalty and doesn't die to bolt. Uh, there are some very powerful 
spells and legacy so that um, with the dual lands, you can untap them as their forests. Right. And there was a couple times where I'd like play Nyssa, untap some lands, brainstorm, and then him to track my opponent. Right. Which is a pretty sweet turn. Tons of interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this deck, of course, you know, got him to Turok, brainstorm, pernicious deed, a bunch of stuff to lock down the player, mm -hmm. and then kill them with planeswalkers. Yep. Sideboard, you've got Force of Wills, a couple of Notion Thieves. These are always fun. Yeah, I almost got to Notion Thief, an opponent who had out a Sylvan Library and an Ancestral Vision, so it was coming off of Suspend, but he drew a Wasteland to keep me off of format. Uh, <laughs> and then they have some Swan Songs and Fluster Storms, some Counter Magic, because yep. this deck does not fare too great against combo other than the discard. Yeah, like you have some discard elements and you can work Liliana pretty well, but you know something like Karn or Kiora or Innocent Blood, it's not going to be very good against something with Sneak Attack in it. Yeah. And then Surgical Extraction and Ensnaring Bridge. Ensnaring Bridge helps you empty your hand, kill them with Planeswalkers of some variety, normally Jace. Normally Jace. Uh, it's interesting with this deck is you ha I found that I had to be very aggressive with my Jace uses. A lot of times I was plussing it. One, to make sure it stays around since it's much more important in this deck than it would be in another Jace deck. And two, just because most of the time I had to kill my opponent with Jace. Yeah. So I just had to aggressively plus two and hope for the best. All right, well, two of the sweet decks are done. You got one left. Mm -hmm. What's the timeline on all the sweet swag? And give a plug to the Kickstarter one more time so people know where to find all the information, when to expect things. Yeah, there's there's one more Legacy deck, and if I don't top eight the Invitational in Somerset, I'm going to play it in the Legacy Open. Okay. And it is the Ley Lines deck that, sweet. that we had on, on camera and did a deck tech with a, yep. a few weeks back. Um, the, uh, the Kickstarter is done, uh, but you can still check it out. Just search for Beard Power. Um, on Kickstarter. Um, it's based out of Roanoke, Virginia. You can also search, search by city. Um, just to get an idea and see all the information, I will have the sketches for the playmat on the Kickstarter. You can check out the shirt. Uh, I will have extras of them, so they are going to be for sale once everything is in. So anybody that missed it, they'll still be able to, to get, get the awesome Get your Beard Power shirt now. Get them now. And uh, you can expect uh, everything will be all done and sent out. You know, sometime towards the end of September. I initially wanted to have it all done in August, but I didn't realize that Kickstarter would take you know a full 14 business days to give me my money. Right. So the order and everything has gotten a little bit delayed, uh, but we can expect everything to be out by the end of September. Excellent. Well, I can't wait for it. I can't wait to see people. I'm sure they're very happy for it. Oh yeah. I will see you next week in the Invitational. Absolutely. Right. Hopefully playing on Sunday with not a ley line stack. That would be great to see. <laughs> Stay tuned all weekend here at StarCityGames.com for all the coverage at the DCO.